Hey guys, it's Ross, and today's video I want to talk about the sex life of figs. And this is a really fascinating topic, it really is. Um, if there was some way for me to actually have the wasp in my climate and document this, it would really make a, a fascinating video, and I would, I would spend a lot of time documenting it and showing you guys the visuals, and it just, it's just such a beautiful, interesting thing, I feel like, that regardless of whether or not you grow figs or even into the fruit of the fig itself, I feel like it's a topic that can hit home with a lot of people. Um, if you just like biology, you like nature, I feel like this is a really fascinating thing. But for those of you guys who are interested into figs and um, just want the quick and dirty and really want to understand this the best you can, um, you know, this is the video for you. I'm just going to try to get this out as much information as I can as quickly as I can. So to begin here, within Ficus carica, which is the species of fig that most people grow, it's the most commonly grown, um, that's the one that fruits for us. We respect the fruit from that one the most. We've been growing it for centuries, you know, thousands of years. But anyway, uh, there's two different types within the Ficus carica. Or there's the male and the female, right? Um, within the male there is three different types or three different crops I should say um, there's also two different types um, there's persistent and there's non persistent we can get into that later but on the female this is the one that fruits and you can eat um, the males inedible so don't try to eat that um, but the female puts out uh, three different types there could be a three different when you you know roll the genetic lottery here and plant some some seeds from figs that hopefully come from persistent capra figs or have that persistent gene in it um, when you roll that dice you're gonna get um, most of the time a female tree and the female tree has three different types though so um, two of the types require pollination of some form and one of the type requires no pollination and since I live in Pennsylvania um, I don't have this special wasp called the blastophaga is what it's referred to as. The blastophaga can survive, uh, I've seen scientific studies actually that were done in Hungary and they found that the fig wasp blastophaga can survive negative 14 degrees Celsius. It will get wiped out almost entirely at that, at, uh, at that temperature and start to take damage at somewhere around negative 12 degrees Celsius. So. If you live in a climate that doesn't really get below negative 12 degrees Celsius, you could potentially colonize the blastophaga where you live. Um, I think it's certainly possible. It's not, it's not going to be easy, but you could do it. But for me, I don't have the wasp and my climate's too cold for something like that unless I have a greenhouse. But, um, you know, I don't really need to worry about pollinating my figs because... I don't have the wasp present so all of my figs that I grow are common is what they're called they're persistent parthenocarpic um, and they call them common not because they're not rare but because that's what they're called it, it's one it's one of the three types of female figs within ficus carica and uh, before we get into the differences between the different female figs the f different female types of figs um, you need to understand that the fig tree can produce two different crops um, at least the female fig can so there's a first crop which forms on last year's wood it pretty much forms in the fall and that overwinters throughout the winter time and in the spring when the tree wakes up it, it grows those figs they're called Braba or the first crop um, there's many names for it and that that crop grows along with new shoots that come out um, from the tree and then along those new shoots will be the the main crop the second crop and that's it right there's only two different crops you got the Brava you got the main crop so between the Brava and the main crop believe it or not some of them could require pollination and some couldn't so with the common fig neither of the two crops requires pollination on the San Pedro type, that's the other type, another type of female uh, fig. 
the Braba does not require any pollination, but the main crop does. And a very classic example of this fig is Desert King. It's probably the most common San Pedro type that exists in the United States. And it's actually widely grown and widely sold. Um, so if you have this fig in your climate and it doesn't ripen the second crop and you've wondered why for all these years, well, that's probably because you don't have the wasp. You don't have the blastophaga. Now, the Smyrna types is the third type of female fig. And this one um, does not get a Braba. So no Braba will be formed. But the second crop does indeed require caprification. So to get any fruit off of the Smyrna at all, you need the Blastophaga, a.k.a. the Fig Wasp. So those are the three different types of female figs. Um, now, if I were to roll the dice and plant some fig seeds that were pollinated from a persistent capra fig, we're going to get to that in just a second, then I would have a 25% chance of getting one of these four different types. We talked about the Smyrna, the San Pedro, the common fig, and the capra fig. The capra fig is the male. So it's very difficult throughout nature to get even a, a, a variety that will even fruit for me right so not only will it just not happen in my climate because I don't have any I don't have the wasp pollinating the figs which then drop the seeds which then form new trees but uh, it's also very unlikely if you, even if you lived in California where the fig wasp the fig wasp was located it's very unlikely that you would get a variety uh, of fig that would then be female but then it's also even more unlikely that it would not require any pollination at all. So it's very difficult and these things have been cultivated for you know thousands of years, but they do. They pop up like, like flies. They're everywhere uh, all throughout California. They're invasive. They're like a weed. Um, the fig you know, really spreads itself all over the place. And because of that, people have been selecting from these different seedlings varieties that they choose to be suitable for probably thousands of years um, so that's why we have pretty decent figs in today's age um, now the male so there's a pretty interesting way that the male works because the fig wasp you know unlike the the honeybee as an example doesn't it, it, well, like any other bee or any other wasp, it needs to, to overwinter in some form, right? It can't survive just flying around. You know, lots of insects either, you know, they, they overwinter in the ground, for example, or maybe on trees. Um, so they need a home, right? Well, what is the fig wasp's home over the winter? Believe it or not, it is the capra fig, the male fig. So within the capra fig, you there's three different crops so just like the female tree the female fig there's the first crop the braba and then there's the second crop the main crop but these have different names the first crop is called the profici and the profici um, is then followed by the mamoni which forms in the fall that's the that is the uh well actually it forms in the summertime that is the crop that is rep is just like the main crop but then there's a second main crop that forms called the mamay and that forms very late in the season where then the fig wasp goes into that crop finally and overwinters itself throughout the winter time and then when the tree wakes up it then grows profici right those are the brava it grows the new the new figs as well as the new growth and the figs then or the, I should say the wasp then leave the mamay and go into the profici and then once the profici are done and those started to swell and all the wasps are leaving the profici <clears throat> by that time the main crop is about 30 days away so it's almost here the mamoni is almost 30 days away so the fig wasp has a very limited window here in order to get to all these different figs that it has to pollinate and so what a lot of people do is commercially is they'll take the profici which is filled with all these different fig wasps and they hang them underneath trees that need to be pollinated 
And this is very common practice with the Calamirna. That's a very common commercial variety. And that's what they'll do. And that way they get pollinated and there's a good, uh, a good success rate there with their entire crop, right? They'll probably hang a certain number of them per tree, a certain number of them per acre, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that kind of leads us now, once you understand that, that kind of leads us now into, well, sort of how the, the seeds work, right? As I mentioned that they need to be pollinated, right? So if, uh, you know, a common fig, as an example, were to be pollinated, because it, it can be pollinated, even though it doesn't need to be pollinated, it can be pollinated, and then um, the, you can take the seeds from that, that fig and plant them. Assuming they have the persistent gene in it, which is what I wanted to mention, is that there needs to be that persistent gene within, I believe, the capra fig, but also it could also be in the female fig as well. I think either one of the figs has to have the persistent gene for it to then form seeds. So the non-persistent figs that are non-persistent, I believe, will not form seeds. Um, and if you guys want to read more about this and really get into this even more, go on this website. I'm going to put this link to the in the description of this video. This guy really has just got the best sources, credible information, really detailed. You can go on here and read this whole thing. It's, it's very, very intricate. Um, so once we've got the seeds, then we plant the seeds. And again, it's 25% per different type of fig. Now... What would happen, let's say, if the San Pedro type or the Smyrnas were never pollinated? Well, then they would drop off. They would never, um, the fig would form, right? It would swell, it would get to a large size, but before it actually got ripe and soft and edible, um, it would fall off. It would drop from the tree and you wouldn't be able to eat it. So, um, if you guys have a tree like that, again, like Desert King, and you're not getting the main crop, it's forming, but it's dropping off, that's exactly what that means. Um, the interesting thing, I think, about how this all works is that the fig wasp is very small, right? It's not like your typical wasp that you would think of, right, with a stinger that harms you, that uh, you know causes havoc every time they're around you. They're very, very small. You really can barely see them. Um, you know, they'll fly into the eye of the fig, which is also very, very small. And only that wasp really can get into the eye of the fig to then pollinate it. And it takes the pollen from the male capra fig, which if you cut it in half, it looks a lot like this, where you'll see some pollen, you know, all kinds of weird different things here. These are the... Um, <clears throat> These are the male flowers here, and there's the um, the female flowers, but then it's, I think on the end is the the male parts. And basically the, the wasp will come in here, they'll leave this section here, and then take the pollen with them, just like a normal honeybee. You know, they take that to the hive where the queen is, give that to all, you know, and then they eat that stuff, and that's their food, right? So um, it's the same thing with the fig wasp is that they'll take this stuff and go to another location, another synconium, because believe it or not, the fig itself is an inside out flower. It's called a synconium. Pretty interesting, right? So all the little female flower parts are on the inside of the fig, and that's what happens. So it goes in the inside of the fig now, pollinates that, and that's what you see, guys, in the actual fig. So if I go to some photos here of a fig, let's say, that we ripened this year. I want to try to find one that's, here we go. So here's the, the male or the female flower parts here, and here's the, the male part. Here's the seed, right? But the seed's not very prominent, believe it or not. It's not very noticeable when you bite into it. When it's pollinated, the seeds are larger, and I think they're activated in some way. And they become crunchier, and they actually add some kind of flavor 
a nutty flavor, more crunch, obviously more texture. Um, and that's something really worth noting, I think, the difference between a pollinated fig versus an unpollinated fig. Another thing that I think is worth mentioning is these things right here, the, the female flower parts. And these are, um, I believe some people call them acnes. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, but these little acnes vary quite differently between different varieties of figs. So they could be longer, they could be shorter, they could be less present, less noticeable, more, more noticeable, really increasing or decreasing the prevalence of the texture of the fig itself and really deeply changing the texture of the fig itself. Um, if we go back, here's a fig that is Coldadam, I believe, Grease. And Coldadam Grease, you can't even see the Achenes. It's a blend. It looks like they're not even there. The female flower parts are not there, but yet we see, we see the male parts, right? We see the seed here. But where are the female parts? Well, like I said, some of them are less noticeable than others, and because Coldenam is so um, well re well known as being a fig that is so thick and jammy and gooey, the biggest reason for that is because the Achenes are really not present. So this is something that I really look for when I'm eating the fig, eating different fig varieties, or looking at different pictures of figs, is that I look for these little Achenes, and if they're more present if they're very present, then it's a fig that I really don't, I'm probably really not going to enjoy. It doesn't matter what the flavor is like. If the texture is off, it's going to be less enjoyable for me. So that's why Col de Dom, Col de Dom Blanc is actually my favorite fig because the Achenes are so small and almost, almost non-existent to the point where this then forms a texture very similar to jam. And that's why I enjoy this so much. So I'm sure we can get more into this, guys. We could really go nuts with this topic. But I think you guys sort of understand how this works, right? The, the wasp leaves different crops of the, of, the male, of the male fig, goes into the female fig, and pollinates that. And here's a whole topic versus uh, persistent and non-persistent figs. Here's the whole you know, breakdown here of... Uh, I think these are called Punnett squares, if I'm not mistaken. And what this will look like when things are pollinated versus not pollinated. Here, here's the Punnett square right here. Is it a Punnett square? But anyway, he gets into all kinds of things about the genetics. Um, what this means, what the seeds look like when they're pollinated versus unpollinated. Um... You know that the the pollinated seeds typically sink in water you know it's really interesting actually so I, I feel like you guys should definitely go check this website out and I'm happy to be able to giving you guys some kind of clue into the sex life of figs um, like I said in the beginning of this video it would be great if I had some myself and could film it live and really get you know a nice little high quality shot you know, if this was the fig and just show you guys the real small different um, wasps along the inside of the fig. There may be a picture here if I can find it. Yeah, so here's the, the figs, the wasps actually trying to enter the fig. And you can see what's left behind all these different wings because if they in order for them to get in they have to actually get rid of their wings believe it or not that's really just absolutely crazy so all right guys thank you so much for watching this one um i'll talk to you later all right take care